Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. We're going to continue on with some VAV box topics. Today I want to talk about direct acting versus reverse acting. So let's get started. Like last week, these terms go back to pneumatic controls on the AV boxes. I thought I'd do these back to back because although you don't see many pneumatic AV boxes very often, they are still in use in some buildings, especially older universities and hospitals. I don't think we need to do a whole video on pneumatics, but basically in a pneumatic system, the components are powered by compressed air, usually 15 to 25 psi, from a main air system. The thermostat receives full air pressure from the main air supply. In response to room temperature, this air pressure is modulated to the controller, which controls the damper position. So when I talk about input or output relative to pneumatic controls, I'm talking about an actual air pressure signal. Let's move this over and get back to direct acting and reverse acting. You can have direct acting and reverse acting thermostats and direct acting and reverse acting controllers, and then any combination of those on your VAV box. In a direct acting thermostat, when the room temperature increases, the thermostat output increases. So it looks like this. In a reverse acting thermostat, when the room temperature increases, the thermostat output decreases, which would look like this. In a direct acting controller, an increase in thermostat signal would cause the controller to increase CFM, kind of like this, where you'd have a min and a max with a modulation range in the middle. In a reverse acting controller, the increase in thermostat signal would result in the controller calling for lower CFM, which would look like this. So let's move this over and make a little room. So now let's look at the direct acting controller graph again. You'll see in this sequence of operations with a direct acting thermostat and a direct acting controller, what happens here is that your room temperature goes up and the direct acting thermostat output goes up and your direct acting controller sees this increase as a call to increase CFM. So if the room gets warmer, you provide more airflow. You would see this in cooling. If you had a reverse acting thermostat in this situation, your thermostat output would go down and your direct acting controller would reduce airflow. So as the room temperature goes up, you would get less air and you would want to use this for heating. Now if we draw the reverse acting controller graph again, if you have a direct acting thermostat with this reverse acting controller, the direct acting thermostat sees a room temperature increase and increases the thermostat signal to the reverse acting controller. The reverse acting controller would reduce the CFM to an increase in thermostat signal, so you'd be sending less air to the space and you'd want to do this during heating. If you have a reverse acting thermostat and a reverse acting controller, the reverse acting thermostat sees the room temperature go up and the thermostat output would go down because it's reverse acting. The reverse acting controller would see the thermostat signal go down and increase the CFM because it is also reverse acting. So as your room gets warmer, you would get more air and this is how you want cooling mode to work. You would use the different configurations based on your application, much like how you want some things to fail open or fail close from the last video, You'll want some things to be triggered by an increase in thermostat output and other things by a reduction in thermostat output. Okay, let's bring all this back on screen. The reason that I said that older universities and hospital buildings still use pneumatic controls is that they often have the main air systems already in place and they like that their facility people can do work on these boxes easily. So that's the difference between direct acting and reverse acting. So if you run into an older building with pneumatic controls, now you know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.